All right, here's the deal. We're heading out to the track right now to uh, race a little eighth mile action. And I was kind of thinking about turning today into maybe like, you know, half how-to, half just, this is fun. That's kind of what I always do. I never do like a full-on how-to. But, you know, I was thinking about maybe making it like a half and half. So, I'll try and show you a few things when it comes to the lights, when it comes to taking off, when it comes to the approach. Because there's a lot, a lot more to drag racing, you know, than you kind of think there is. Like the first time I went, I, I had been to races before like, and didn't race. So I knew how the tree works. And we're not going to get any practice runs on the clutch because I'm wearing my gloves, my racing gloves. Which they're not the common ones that I wear because I have my everyday gloves which are more comfortable for everyday riding. We're racing so I want to have a little, a little higher quality glove on. Blah, 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 blah. The point is, I gotta get used to them and we're not gonna get any off the line jumps. Like, I'm gonna have to practice my clutch <clears throat> with these gloves on when we're there. All right, that's all right. I'll just, I'll just run really bad every time. That's fine, I don't mind. I'm probably gonna miss every shift anyway, so what's the big deal, right? So uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the important ones is when to pick your feet up. So I'll talk about that real quick. Of course you guys know how to approach the light, you, you know, it, you, that's kind of something you figure out when you're there. You get in line, you wait in line, you get up to the front. Okay, that's how you get to the front. This is, this is like the Friday night type stuff where you go with your streetcar. If you're going to a real, you know, racing uh, competitively, then that's a little different. So we're going to talk about the street version and this particular place we go uh, at Qualcomm in the parking lot. So you show up. you. They have to inspect your vehicle before you go on. People think you can just go on there, you know, and race whatever, but you can't. It, there are a lot of rules. You have to pass. I'm hoping most vehicles pass, but I'm hoping mine does. I don't. I have no reason why I wouldn't last time it did. So most of the time you just kind of hope because there's not a lot of things you can do about it at the last second there. All right. So the inspection is pretty straightforward. For a car, it's really detailed. For a bike, they. You know, they basically look at a few things that you have to have. I think your headlights have to work, at least one of them. You know, your tail lights, I don't know if they have to work or not. Signals, I don't think you have to have at all. Like, because people are being a track car, right? So it doesn't have to actually be street legal, but it does have to be track legal. And the key there, the, the things that will cause an instant failure, if you're leaking any fluids, if you're lower than a certain height, blah, blah, blah. All of that, I'm not gonna try and explain to you because it's different for every track, it's different for every, you know, wherever you're going. It's probably gonna be a little different. If you're racing a motorcycle, a street one, one that you drive all the time, you're probably legal. Unless, you know, you're driving around with like your headlights out or your taillights don't work or something. Then you're not street legal. If you are technically and actually street legal, you're probably good. All right, good. So once you pass the inspection, they have to make sure for a motorcycle, you have to have a certain type of helmet because they, they don't really inspect any of your gear, but you do have to be wearing long sleeves, long pants. I think on a motorcycle, you have to have boots on. You, you wouldn't want to run it in anything else, so if you try to go to a track in street shoes, I'm gonna call you an idiot. But, you know, I think you have to have boots on. I wouldn't mess around with that. I would wear your full gear. And then the key that got me last time, and that's not gonna get me this time, is your helmet. It can't just be any old helmet. You know, everything else can be everyday clothes, like what I'm wearing. I'm not even wearing track shoes or leather pants or anything. I am wearing my leather coat. But the one that'll get you is your helmet. And it needs to be uh, Snell 2010 for this particular track. I'm, I don't know if every track is like that, but that's a pretty new, relatively new helmet. You know, so you can't be running something too old or they they won't let you race. That's what happened to me last time. It was a Snell 2000 because it was made in 2008 or probably something like that. So it wasn't the newest, it wasn't even close to the newest uh, regulations, but this helmet is. I bought this one specifically for this reason so I can bring it to the track. So Snell 2010 for my track. It's 2015 now. I don't know if they're going to update those regulations anytime soon. I hope they don't because I have a 2010 helmet. <laughs> but 
it's it's up to date as far as I know, and I hope that doesn't cause me any problems. But you can we can you can rent at this track because they make you run it even in cars, which is not common for all of them. This dude was not going to give me any room. So anyway, even if you're in a car, they make you wear a helmet, it's 2000, Snell 2010 helmet, not just any old helmet, which doesn't make a ton of sense to me. This guy is getting his mirror nicked, I think. Oh, so close. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so yeah, even if you're in a car, they make you run with a helmet and a new one at that, so my other one didn't quite work, but this one will. All right, so once you get up to the track, uh, we're going to skip a few parts here because it's going to be real hard for me to describe without actually being there. You get in line, you run up to the front, a few th key things happen. Uh, the tree, you don't just drive straight up to the tree and sit there at like a normal stoplight, right? This stop line is here right in front of me and no one stops at it as you can see, but in racing that's super, super important. Uh, I'll talk about that later when I get up there and actually try and point a few things out for you. That was not a good place to accelerate fast. Too many bumps. That wasn't even very fast. So, you know, the stop line is super important. I'll explain that more. It's called staging. The tree is real important. I'll explain that more later. And, uh, yeah, so that, that'll sort of get you past those initial bits. So, hang in there, because I'm going to try and bring you a little more how-to later. And whether I'm talking or putting graphics on the screen is yet to be seen, but I'll do something so you guys can see how to race the 8th mile at Qualcomm Stadium. What was his time? Uh, 7.6.9 was his ET. Okay. You need to stick around for trophies. Yeah! Um, Look at that! Yeah. 2.168, 95.13, 8.112. Reaction time saved me there, but I couldn't get off the line fast. That's, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's better be lucky than that. That's true. So I ran that one in point, point five oh two which is 0 .02 seconds above perfect. So she said I need to stick around for a trophy. <clears throat> All right, so now's a good time after I may have hit a trophy there. Now's a good time to talk about how exactly to do that, to get a perfect reaction time and or to run it fast. I'm not running it fast because my clutch letting out isn't good. But my reaction time is real good, and that's what you want. So the key there is uh, the key there is to watch the lights, and I'm going on the third yellow. I've been I've been saying that for a while now, but when the third yellow comes up, that's when I hit it. And you know, just the way it works, by the time my bike is actually moving and leaves the start gate, I go. So like I was saying, when you come up on the gates, watch it this time. There'll be two lights uh, at the top, two yeah, two double sets. So you can kind of see it up there, but you'll see when we get closer. There, one light comes on, and then another light will come on, and that's where I stop. After that, three staging lights. So there's two lights up top. After that, one, two, three, and then green. That's how the lights go. So these are the staging lights. That's why I'm in the right position. And then after that, it's uh, the you know the actual lights. So yellow, 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 go. That's your half second. It's a 0.5 track. So half second after. Uh, they start going is when you take off. 
My reaction time that time was 0.502, so it was two hundredths of a second off perfect. She said I should stick around for a trophy. So that's a way to get off the line is, like I said, I, I try and tell everyone here, you go on the third yellow, not the green. Everyone, everyone knows that who's ever been to a track like this. You don't go on the green, you're, you're behind. If you're, if you're on time, you're late. Let's put it that way. So you go on the third yellow, and I'm just, I don't know, I just hit it at the right time. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> So, the next key is getting your clutch just right. And that is what I'm failing at. That's why I'm running 8.1 instead of a 7.9 like I want. Come on, Mustang. New exhaust. That's what you need. Seriously, bro. All right. So, this time, I am going to get the good reaction time, I hope. But what I need to do is get the right amount of rev and clutch just perfect to put all that power right down on the ground and then just stay on it and hit my shifts hitting the shifts is also key but I've been doing pretty good I haven't been tacking it right at 15.5 but I've been shifting it like 14 and that's good enough for my purposes I, I could break 8 well maybe actually maybe not I think it's all in the start where I'm losing it but we'll see Miss the shift! Miss the shift! Oh fuck, cramp, cramp! You whore! Oh damn! Ah! So cramped! Seven eight? Are you sure that's me? Yep. Wow! Nice. I told you. <laughs>